Being a brown content creator, I was already subjected to extra scrutiny. Obviously at the start of my career, everyone loved everything I was saying. But when I started to focus more about race, that's when it got really sensitive and that's when a lot of people were triggered because nobody likes to talk about race in Singapore. Hi, I'm Pretty Please, Singapore's top everything. And I'm currently serving a two-year conditional warning under Section 298A of the Penal Code for a video I made in 2019 about racism. I'm pretty pleased. Singapore With close to 40,000 followers on Instagram, Pretty Please is a household name in Singapore, known for producing satirical content that touches on social issues like racism and body positivity. Pretty Please first made waves in 2016 when she released a parody video on Orchard Road's Fashion Police. But it was this video in 2019 that created an uproar online and at the same time landed Pretty Please in trouble with the authorities. Controversy over the video erupted when Pretty Please and her brother published a response to an ad that featured brown face. YouTuber Pretty Naya and her brother Subash have been given a 24-month conditional warning by the police for a rap video. The siblings were investigated by the authorities for their rap video. But this hasn't stopped Pretty Please from calling out racism online. Hey Pretty, hi! <laughs> Vice World News speaks to Pretty Please to find out more about racism in Singapore and why it is such a difficult topic to broach in the city-state. You've been back in the news recently with a video reaction to the short back TikTok video. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? I have a web series called Pretty Please Reacts. So I literally just react to whatever people ask me to. Or just random fun things. I got tagged in this random short back TikTok ad at least like 30, 40 times. They literally just had a TikTok dancer dressed up in full Indian wear, dancing to a Indian-inspired beat or song, and he was just singing like "Download Shot Back," like around, something like that. So I'm like, what is the point of this video? Like, why do you have to market it this way? It's ultimate appropriation because this was not in time for any like Indian festival or occasion. If you're gonna have something that's completely Indian-inspired, you would think you would have an Indian person fronting it. So why is this even Indian-inspired? So what I did was make the reaction video. The video was really just focused on how I don't understand why advertisers really don't put their consumers first and they don't actually think about how a uh, consumer's gonna react. And I just said how I felt and I got attacked online. <laughs> Classic pretty. So people started to argue with me and say like, oh, there is no such thing as minority discrimination in Singapore. The arguments started to get really heated and people were fighting in my comment section. And I tend to like, you all can have a discussion if you want. My comment section should be a free space. I'm not going to block things or delete things unless it's really like toxic and you're just here to like attack someone else or bully other people or something like that. So yeah, I didn't really respond to anything until I got called out for working with Shop back in 2019 and then calling them out today in 2021. Some random account just commented to say, didn't you also do an ad with Shopback in 2019? This guy said, I think it's pretty disingenuous for someone who has previously profited from Shopback to turn around and slam them. So I said, dude, I'm always going to choose to speak up for what I believe in, even if it means losing coin or potentially a sponsor. My integrity is not for sale. And what's the point of taking a stage if I can't be critical of it? Besides, if I don't say anything, people are going to be like, you see, Pretty is beholden to all her industry relationships. Say something. Shopback has since released an official apology statement in response to the brownface video on its TikTok account. In a country that prides itself on equality among ethnic groups, racism in Singapore can be punished by law. Racial and religious harmony is upheld by Section 2988A of the Penal Code, where acts or representation that attempt to promote ill feelings targeted towards a racial or religious group is a criminal offence. Let's talk about the probational warning that you received two years ago. Mm -hmm. What were the terms around it? Okay, so... I actually wasn't on probation. It's a, it's a two-year conditional warning. It just meant that in these two years, I couldn't commit any crime. And if I did, I could get charged and caught for the rap video. So this happened in 2019. There was an ad that came out and it was, they were trying to promote like some online payment method. So it was called Nets ePay. And they had a Chinese actor, like a veteran actor, play all the four main races in Singapore. 
and essentially did brown face and he was like wearing a tudong to represent this Muslim woman, which I, I think is super ridiculous. So when the ad came out, it already received quite a lot of backlash. The response video that my brother and I made was a rap video. We essentially just did a parody of a big song. The song was essentially called like, Get Up. That was the song. And I mean, to me, it's very clear that Get Up means to screw it up and to make a mistake. So in our video, we were saying, to quote me, I was saying, Chinese people always out here it up. That was what the lyrics said. And that, and that was what got us in trouble. So after that video came out, it went viral. And within, I think, 24 hours of it coming out, we received like emails from IMDA telling us to take down the video. And essentially, we were involved in like a whole like police interrogation. And after that, we received a two-year conditional warning for making the rap video. Why do you think that you have been, you know, like you're under greater scrutiny? I think in general, like, being a brown content creator, I was already subjected to extra scrutiny. Obviously at the start of my career, like everyone loved everything I was saying, all the parodies I was doing and stuff like that. But when I started to focus more about race, that's when it got really sensitive and that's when a lot of people were triggered because nobody likes to talk about race in Singapore. And with good reason, because look at what happened to me. <laughs> Why is it so difficult to talk about race in Singapore? I feel like there are many forms of racism in Singapore. It's mostly microaggressions, mostly the daily things. And every like Indian girl my age is going to relate to half the stories I have or half the, the ridiculous jokes I've heard in secondary school. Growing up in secondary school, especially so in my teen years, that's when in school people started to make jokes like um, about my skin colour and how I'm black. So they would refer to me not as African-American, but literally as like this skin colour being black. And they would say things like, literally my class would be leaving to go for our PE lessons. They would switch off the lights and be like, oh, where's pretty? Like, we can't see her anymore. And I'm like, you literally can see everything. You can see everything in this classroom. It's bright enough. So it was just like, Obviously it wasn't rational, they were all kids and saying dumb things, but it's really a thing that, these are all jokes that I think the average brown person in Singapore has heard. Like many Singaporeans, Pretty Peas grew up in a multi-ethnic neighbourhood where racial integration is maintained through quotas in public housing flats like these. But while different racial groups in Singapore may coexist in the same space, racial discrimination is still a prevalent issue. So it's a really nice area. This mm -hmm. is where you grew up? Yeah, so this is Sunset Way. I lived here for the most part of my childhood, since I was like a five-year-old maybe, up till I was like a 15-year-old. This was the last house that my family owned. Since the last time I, I, I lived here in 2010, it has been super gentrified, obviously. So like this pathway didn't even exist. And the basketball court over there was where my brother and I would play basketball every single day, every evening. How have your experiences growing up as a minority in Singapore shaped your voice on social media? I guess because of how public my career is, you know, it's the most in everyone's face, it's the most obvious. They see it more than anyone else who might not be, you know, on the public space at all. So I guess it's definitely shaped my, my career today and everything that I stand for and talk about because it's just me living my best life based off my actual personal experiences with all these different topics that I've talked about actually. So even things like cyberbullying, even things like body positivity. So has this experience of trying to censor you affected your way and your career going forward? When we just received the conditional warning, it was definitely really stressful. And that's when I started to second guess myself and constantly like I was tone policing myself. And I was always like double checking my content to be like, can I say this? Is it okay? Am I going to get in trouble again? Because I already have a warning. It, it got to a point where I wasn't comfortable to just be pretty pleased and do everything and say everything I was always you're so used to saying. But then I started to tell myself like, that's, that's no way to live. Because if you're a content creator and you stand for all these things and you've already spoken up about so much, I'm, the last thing I'm going to do right now is let this conditional warning silence me. What is the next thing for Pretty Peas? A party? No, I'm kidding. So, so obviously nothing's going to happen like that because there's a pandemic going on. So, I mean, honestly, I'm just going to probably celebrate with like my loved ones and just, yeah, just do something, celebrate the occasion, celebrate 14th of August 2021 because that's the end of the two-year conditional warning. But career-wise, I've been trying to plan like uh, some new music because, I mean, I got in trouble for a rap video. It only makes sense for me to make new music. 
I mean, I definitely think the next step is room for actual discourse. There should be enough room for us to like have conversations like this, healthy and productive conversations about anything and everything we want, whether it's going to be online, whether it's going to be panels, workshops, discussions, you know, however it's going to exist, I think it should exist and there sh it shouldn't be policed to the extent that it is right now. You know, like questioning simple things like that and, and realizing that this is a space that's comfortable enough for you to speak your mind and people are actually going to listen and not shut you down or try and silence you.